ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Adherent First and 15. I'm very proud to have today the whole uh, part of the ERS Juniors Board, all of the friends that I'm seeing ever somehow. And today we are going to talk about different topics. We will go from how to get or choose a fellowship, then go to anatomy and then go to radiology. And, and each of our guests will talk about something. So we will start now with Alexandra Barach. Good morning, Alexandra. Good morning, Claire. Thank you. To Hello, be everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Alexandra, we'll briefly talk about how to choose the fellowship. Just a quick reminder, every, uh, every speak will, uh, will last between 15 and 20 minutes. Then we will pass the torch to another speaker. So please just remind that question and answer should be done at the end of the whole panel, okay? Thank you so much. Please go ahead. Hello, Hello everyone. Good morning, good day. Thank you for joining this webinar today. So this is great to have uh, part of the ERS uh, Juniors uh, Committee today. And thank you, Puya, for the great organization. I'm going to tell you today something about how to choose the fellowship. Uh, within otorhinolaryngology, the subspecialty of rhinology is rapidly evolving over the past two decades. This is based on the number of factors, including the development of advanced surgical procedures, increased understanding of the basic science and medical underpinnings of sinus nasal disease, and ongoing effort by academic leaders. Inherent to the development of uh, subspecialty is the educational process, which distinguishes the core requirements of residency training from the advanced skills and knowledge attained during the fellowship. So uh, the history of formal fellowship training in rhinology is brief. Although fellowships have existed for approximately two decades, there was no formal organization of the application process before 2006. Starting from 2006, a centralized match process has been created and the numbers of applicants and programs have remained strong. Uh, for the years from for the first few years, 2016, 2006, sorry, 2007 and 2008, the, there were from 22 up to 34 registered applicants and from 16 to 18 registered programs. You can see now uh, from the last year data that there are much more programs and much more applicants. Um, so although the fellowship application process has recently become a formal match, the goals and actual experiences of rhinology uh, fellows remain incompletely defined. I want to start from the beginning. So I want to uh, first shortly discuss uh, how to identify career goals. Uh, so you have to be completely sure and completely clear that you want to go forward, that you want to uh, take fellowship. So it's very important to be um, clear with yourself if you want to do surgery, clinical work, uh, clinical research, laboratory research, education. Uh, you have to know if you want to dedicate daytime or nighttime to your job, if you want to do night shifts or if you want to do on service time. And um, of course, uh, it's very important to be uh, clear that uh, are you able to tailor what you would like to do. Uh, then, when you decide that you definitely want to, to do a fellowship, it's very important to find a um, country, to appropriate country, where you want to do fellowship. It means that that country should fulfill your essential criteria. Also, it's very important to think about language requirements, because different countries have uh, different uh, language requirements. Some, some of them... Um, require to be almost native speaker in their um, language, but for most you can use English. Uh, when you check this step, you should go to the next step. Next step is of course to make balance with your uh, job uh, and your private life. So it's very important to ask yourself what I'm going to do with my family or my family plans. Can I go there with my family? Uh, and uh, when you make balance on that side, you should think, is it fellowship granted, uh, funded? And if um, not, you should think uh, how to find appropriate scholarship because without scholarship, 
you can do it and uh, it would be very expensive. So this is a very nice map uh, of uh, fellowships. Uh, I get it by courtesy of our ERS junior president, Paolo Sherda. Uh, so for different countries, there are different rules. Uh, and uh, you can uh, have different expectations from different regions. Uh, it depends if you want to do hands-on fellowship. It depends if you uh, want to make special agreement with uh, some hospital or uh, if you want to do short or long observership. Uh, for example, for UK, uh, there is well-established format of fellowship. Um, Training and medical degree is fully recognized for European Union applicants. Uh, it, it would be good if, if uh, applicants have previous UK experience. Usually it's one year fellowship. And of course, very good English is essential. Uh, you might be asked to show evidence of language skill and uh, if you don't have it, to pass some of the official exams uh, English exams and it's not just just to pass exam it's also important um, which score you get on the, on the exam uh, regarding the Netherlands for example uh, training and medical degree is fully recognized for European Union applicants it's usually one year fellowship and uh, you can find some of fellowship at our ERS website uh, also language um, regarding the language Dutch is strongly advised but it's not required so you can still use English but uh, if you know Dutch uh, it's one point more for you test is not needed for Germany uh, it depends on the regions but uh, there there is no official uh, title fellow but there is a possibility of fellowship in larger hospitals applicants have to fulfill the essential criteria criteria which are specific for each hospital and German in some of them uh, especially for the surgical and clinical work is essential uh, it's allowed for Europe, Europe, European Union applicants and test is not needed uh, for Australia and New Zealand uh, there are different options so there are um, uh, different options for fully funded fellowships and uh, no need for board exam for stay up to two years. It's very important to check if your university is on the approved list. Uh, I mean, university that you choose for your fellowship. Uh, it would be good if you have some previous uh, UK experience. And there are some um, except, uh, exceptions for native speakers or doctors who pre, uh, practice previously in an English speaking countries for at least several years. Otherwise, English test is um, uh, required. So for USA, uh, USA fellowships are the most prestigious, but they're very, very competitive fellowships. Uh, there are some exceptions for native speakers or doctors who practice in English speaking countries for several years. Otherwise, test is mandatory, but also it's important which score you get. Uh, if you search literature today, there are a lot of publications dealing with um, fellowships, uh, with the um, satisfaction of fellows uh, in rhinology and in general in otolaryngology. Uh, and uh, this is one good study from 2016 um, about training and practice patterns among recent otolaryngology fellowship uh, graduates. And you can see here that uh, mostly three times more uh, they are male, what is uh, very well known. And also you can see that uh, rhinology fellowship uh, in this study uh, were 30% uh, uh, present uh, above all, from all otolaryngology uh, fellows. Uh, here are the factors influencing decisions uh, to start the fellowship. So at the first place, uh, it was found that it is salary, then preparation uh, experience for, for the practice, then uh, research interest, uh, then working with a good mentor that you choose, that, that uh, participants choose, and at the last point, clinical interest. Um, Renault, this is uh, also from the same study. 
uh, rhinology trained and head and neck oncology trained physicians were asked to report their comfort level while independently performing school-based procedures in general, as well as for a range of uh, advanced endoscopic and open approaches to the entire school base. Uh, this survey uh, demonstrates that recent fellowship graduates are getting exposure to school-based uh, procedures in training and incorporating these procedures into their practice at an early stage, which is very good. Both rhinology and head and neck oncology training yield a high level of comfort performing uh, school-based procedures in general after graduation. However, rhinology fellowship training is associated with a higher level of exposure to endoscopic anterior school-based uh, school surgery and may translate into improved expertise in advanced endoscopic antenasal approaches. This is also uh, one more uh, publication I choose uh, in a hundred of different to, to share with you. Uh, this study was done in period from 2006 uh, when official this subspecialty was recognized up to 2011. So period to, from 2006 uh, to 2011 have witnessed the introduction of numerous rhinology fellowships that may have altered the education of individuals electing to start postgraduate training. Uh, the objective of this study was to uh, evaluate the Rhinology Fellowship experience and its possible impact on current practice patterns of fellowship-trained rhinologists. Uh, the primary results shown that the primary reasons for selecting a Rhinology Fellowship were a career in academics in almost 60% of participants and uh, interest in rhinology procedures around 30% of participants. Uh, overall, fellowship experience was rated as excellent by 84% of participants. Uh, the mean number of uh, rhinologic uh, procedures during fellowship were more than 200 in 60% and um, 150 in 27% uh, of respondents. Allergy training exposure was reported by 59% uh, during training and the clinical and basic science research exposure was rated as excellent by 90% uh, of fellows. So if you're hoping to obtain a fellowship, uh, the competition can be stiff, but it's worth it. Fellowship can take your research and your career in general to new heights and some even offer financial, financial and travel rewards. Uh, no matter what your career goals are, obtaining a fellowship can make your dreams reality if you choose the appropriate one. And uh, here's what you should know before submitting a fellowship application. So think about your post-fellowship life. Where do you see yourself? How can each of the fellowship help you to get there? One of the most advantages, uh, I mean, uh, elements of fellowship experience is growing a professional network that will stand you in a good um, uh, stead for the rest of your career. Consider how each fellowship option may help you in this way. Rather than think short term, these decisions should be made with your future in mind. So in your uh, life in total, which fellowship is the best to get to where you want to go is the most important question. Uh, sometimes, um, the decision between fellowships will be made for you. Does the particular fellowship require you to be away from your family for some longer period of time? Or you uh, just, you, or you can take your family there? If so, uh, are you able to do this? Consider in each case how much you will be giving up in order to fulfill the obligations of the fellowship. Then answer the simple question of which option feels the better for you. On the other side uh, of the coin, what other opportunities are included in, uh, included in each fellowship option? Is travel involved and funded? Would you get the opportunity to live and work uh, in a place interest of you or in the country interest to you? Uh, do either possibilities provide internship or work experience opportunities that will benefit you down the line? The perfect fellowship includes both internship and the opportunity co to conduct research also, uh, the perfect fellowship uh, offers balance with your 
private life and with their family. Uh, it's important to weigh up the added benefits of each option. And uh, into the most important question is which one excites you more? So which one of the options make your gut go yes? If one truly excites you more than the other, listen to that voice. So you don't want to spend the rest of your life wondering what might have happened if you had followed your um, instinct. So also a very important question is to identify mentors with whom you want to work. Of course, you need expert, but the person that uh, you can work with. Uh, it's important to, to think uh, about these uh, lines uh, when you want to find out appropriate program. Uh, it's important to find out where, when, and how to apply. So think carefully about what you want to get out of fellowship. What type of uh, clinical surgical training, what kind of research you want to complete, what you want to do long term, and what are possibilities for advanced training, uh, who are and where, uh, who are the mentors, and where, where the mentors are who fit what you are looking for. And it's very important to speak with the advisor, to fellowship uh, director or chief and other fellows in the division to see uh, if it's appropriate fellowship for you. Uh, and uh, very important, especially for women, is that it's completely okay uh, to take a year off. So it's important to have, it, have this in your mind. Uh, so it's uh, important to, to balance with your private life, especially for women, especially for maternity leave. So uh, it's okay to take one, two, three years off before do or before apply for fellowship. Uh, and because it's good to take time, or especially if you don't yet know what to go. So uh, take one year off to think about that. Uh, the next important step is interview. So uh, learn very well about the programs you are going to visit. Uh, learn uh, why do you want to attend that program? So these answers on these questions should be very clear to you. Why would you be a good fit? What type of research or clinical or surgical work um, would you want to work? Uh, read up on the particular research or clinical interest so of faculty members you may be meeting or you're going to work with. It's important to know what are priorities of the program uh, and uh, what are surgical clinical needs of division. Uh, are there adequate um, appropriate faculty and support staff? Also, uh, are um, there research needs of division? Because maybe in your head you plan to do a PhD after your fellowship, but maybe that division you choose uh, doesn't need it. Uh, then it's important to think about quality of mentorship, uh, quality of surgical clinical training. Uh, it's important to think uh, if you plan that after your clinical fellowship, uh, if it's able to earn master or PhD degree at that place, or you have to change the place and the division or hospital or even a country to do that. Um, yes, and uh, also, as I previously said, it's very important to have in mind that it's very expensive. So to think about funding. Are the official training grants supported by government or not, or by department or by hospital? Who provides the funding for your fellowship? For how long? How much? Do you have to apply for additional grants during fellowship? Is there a safety net in case you apply for a grant, but it's uh, not successful? Uh, so my advice for juniors and for early career seniors, so uh, early career um, rhinologists uh, uh, and uh, early career doctors who plan to start to apply for some fellow is to start to think about training goals. Uh, although this looks like some general sentence unuseful, this is very important to have it on your mind, very important. So to if you know clear what are your goals, uh, you will make uh, every step to be appropriate to catch that goal. So it's important to think about uh, research programs you want to do, to think and learn on time 
how to write applications, it's not just to applicate, it's, it's to know how to do that, it's to be prepared for the interview, it's to choose appropriate program and uh, to arrange your senior schedule so you have time to move to, to fellowship if you're already from uh, in the stage from junior to senior stage. So, um, what can you do to give your fellowship application to be amazing uh, to get an edge? Here are my top secrets uh, to winning competitive uh, fellowship. So first, uh, many people focus their application on expressing all the things they will personally gain and achieve through the fellowship. This is a mistake. Uh, fellowships are investment in people. So people who will help um, uh, advance the fellowship organization's missions and goals. So while fellowships provide opportunities for you to enhance your skills and expand your professional uh, network, that's not the sole uh, purpose of the fellowship and that should not be the sole focus of your uh, application. So it's not about your goals, it's about the uh, fellowship organization goals. Uh, also, it's important to think um, uh, about it. Who else can tell you what the fellowship committee is really looking for? Who else can tell you what the interview process is like? So speak to at least three former fellow fellows. Who else uh, can tell you what made their application for this specific fellowship stand up? Then uh, give a great interview. So <laughs> this is much easier to, to set than done. The best advice is to be as real uh, as possible. Um, feel free to practice your responses. Feel free to practice how to, to speak. Uh, but not so much that they come off uh, as too formal. Uh, you know the details of the fellowship you are applying for and speak to why you want that spe specifically and concrete that fellowship and no any other. Um, if you are the candidate that's right for the job, it will be enough to win over any committee. So uh, next is uh, to obtain stellar recommendations. A great recommendation comes from someone who knows you and knows your work very, very well. These are absolutely essential to having a successful fellowship application. Make sure each of your references can attest to your previous work, uh, your successes and you as potential candidate. So ensure you have a great uh, recommendations by providing everyone with your uh, CV and uh, going over your job um, experience before they are contacted. Uh, so it's not, not just to have two or three recommendations, they have to be very, very good. Uh, and uh, last, but not the least, be sure you want it and then put your heart and put your soul into it. So the key to successful being offered a fellowship opportunity is being strong in all categories, not just one particular area. The winning formula is good old fashioned hard work, experience, passion, of course, and drive. So you have to fully put your heart in. Um, just at the end, I want to uh, mention that there are different types of scholarships. Uh, maybe you just need the short observership. So uh, you can check um, Ayaki website. Uh, it's, uh, 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 we are collaborating a lot with the Iaki juniors, so you can check what they offer. Uh, they have research and clinical fellowship. Uh, also, uh, for example, British Rhinological Society has uh, support for uh, travel, for travel fellowship, but you have to be in UK training programs. And uh, for us, the most important is to check uh, ERS website because there are ERS fellowships, very good, and uh, they can um, um, make important uh, impact to your career. So this is my picture from 2015 when I got ERS observership and they had very, very important impact on my next steps and my future career and goals. So for all of you, you're going to apply. Good luck. I hope this Perfect. was useful. Great. So great presentation, Alexandra. I thank you for your uh, efforts, which is uh, basically done today. And I hope the people will join more fellowship as much as possible. So we'll lead. The